Recently, I've been doing LEGO World War II speed builds, but the results just always felt unfinished. So today, I'm gonna create the best LEGO D-Day build that I possibly can with no time limit. I actually went through my LEGO brick by brick and removed all the knockoffs, and then I bought 500 pounds worth of new LEGO. So at this point, if my World War II LEGO D-Day build is still horrific, then I have no excuses and it's just clearly a lack of talent. Now, instead of using three 32 by 32 base plates, today I'm gonna use two 48 by 48. Of course, I'll be calling up my World War II LEGO minifigures, and at the end of the video, I might be creating my very own custom LEGO vehicles. And again, you can use the timestamps down below to skip around. Now, I basically spent my life savings on this video, so subscribe. <laughs> Let's start the clock. Okay, so here are our base plates. I'm gonna mount the clock to the actual build to start off with. There we go, that looks totally legit. And then let's get the timer on there as well. Now remember last time when I didn't have enough pieces, this time I'm actually going to be able to create a beach. Now, I don't have all the pieces I'd like because I simply can't afford it. But what I do have is I've got everything organized and I've got a bunch of new replacements. So what we're gonna do in this section here, we're just going to texture the whole of the beach. So so let's start with the blues. How is this taking me five minutes and I'm only just getting on the first bit of water? Just as well, this isn't a speed build, eh? Okay. Hey, that's pretty good. Oh, hold on a second. There's an imposter among us. Kill it. Ah! Okay, let's go with that. I'm happy with that for the actual water section. So let's just get the actual beach down itself, shall we? Now, it might not look like it, but that's us actually done for this section here. Now, the reason why is because we want to make sure the beach is gradually increasing in its slope. So the next set is going to be actual full bricks. Also, uh, because I'm running out of these. <laughs> True story. So these pieces here, these new pieces are gonna come in handy to help us get that done. And then I think I've got some here as well. So let's drag those out too. You know, one thing that I'm realizing is that I still probably don't have enough Lego. Even after buying 500 quid's worth of Lego, I still probably don't have enough. This is an expensive, expensive channel to run. Rip. Right, so if you're not familiar with this, this will make sense to you soon. Well, I hope it does anyway. So notice it's been almost 50 oh, minutes God. and this is what I've done so far. I don't work efficiently as, as you can see. Now what I've got is I've got these dark bluish gray pieces and I'm going to use those to kind of like fill in the bits between. And the reason I've not put one here is because this will be the path up the side. They'll come up here, the big bunker will be in the center and then there'll be some other emplacements around the back here or that's what I have in my mind anyway. Okay, the first piece is on. Many more to go. <laughs> So at this point, we're gonna move on to sculpting the first bunker. Now before we do that, let me paint a little picture for today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Imagine a game with over 700 unique champions, an incredibly detailed tactical RPG battle system, fantastic graphics, and a perfect blend of PvE and PvP. Oh, guess what? Raid Shadow Legends has all of those things and more. Here, let me show you three of the most badass champions in the game. Baron hands down has the most epic armor and terrifying attack stats, Cupidus also has unstoppable attack abilities whilst looking insanely fresh, and Valkyrie is well- well, I think you know why I picked Valkyrie. It doesn't hurt that she's also one of the best defense champions in the game. Just because you're raiding a dungeon doesn't mean you can't look good whilst you're doing it. Raid Call of the Arbiter is now in full swing, and to celebrate this epic limited series, Raid's adding some new characters from the series as champions you can play in-game, which is delicious. The first one is Artak, a mighty orc warlord. What's great is that Artak is gonna be available for everyone for free. All you have to do is just log into Raid for seven days between now and July 24th. And if you've ever seen episode one, Call of the Arbiter, you'll definitely want this guy. And if you haven't seen it, 
what are you doing? Go check it out and then remember to log in for seven days to get our tag. So with all of this exciting stuff coming to Raid and more, if you haven't started playing the game yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. For example, an epic champion Talia, as well as a bunch of other useful stuff. Once you're in and crushing your enemies, come find me under the name Plastic Scott, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. So just hit the link in the description and I'll see you on the battlefield. Now I guess the question is, how do I make my bunker? I think we start there and then we do one on the other side. This will make so much sense to you once it's, um, you know, once I've actually built it. Now we've got to build like this mid section here, don't we? How do we do that and make it look good? You know what? Maybe we don't overcomplicate it. There is something we could try. Look at that. Nice. It's actually coming together. Right. And then when that slots in there, okay, that's now. That looks like a bunker. Thank God for that. I just want to show you this bunker here. Like that is really not too shabby. Now it could do with some detailing. Those corners there, I just don't have a piece for it. And frankly, it's it's very upsetting. Okay, now let's get the front walls of the cliff on. Not doing detailing or anything like that yet. Literally just gonna try and get those walls assembled. Okay, that's one cliff face on. Again, obviously that looks really flat and Bruh. just bad at the minute. What I'm doing here will make sense to you in a minute. Also, that's almost four hours of recording and it's actually incredible how little it looks like I've done. Okay, so you see this here? Basically, what I've got planned is I'm going to try and make like a like a little machine gun position in the cliff here. Something like this. I think that's what I'm gonna go for and I'm just gonna have to do it and make it work. It might not look great to begin with, but I'm gonna do my very best to make that look less bad. Also, what I'm gonna do now, okay, so because the phone, let me just quickly show you, it's on 4%. I do not want that timer to run out, so I'm gonna go put this on charge. Now, whilst that's charging, because the timer is still going, I'm gonna continue new building, but the cameras all also need to be recharged. So you'll see an update in an hour or so. 24 hours later. So day two of building. Yes, believe it or not, this is actually a new day. You would be hard to tell seeing as the lighting's the same and I'm what? literally wearing the same clothes. Today, we are going to finish the build. Now, before we do anything else, let's just get a recap. Now, I've got to say I'm incredibly happy with where we got to last night. It's actually looking like a good build. We've got the ocean, which is lacking a bit of detail, but then we've got a beach with some stones and some sand piled up. Then I guess the minifigures would make their way up here where they would then reach a pillbox. From there, they would then enter the trench network and of course the bunker system that we've got here. And then on the far side, also that machine gun position around the side. Now at this point, I'm sure you'll agree that there's a good amount down here, but it's missing some detail. So that's what we're going to do now. Of course, we've got to get the grass and mud down. I might also get some brown to line the trenches. And then we need to tile up all the edges around here. To add a little bit of detailing to the cliffs, and the region around that area. We will also put some vegetation. Obviously, we're gonna get some beach defenses and then we'll also place down the minifigures all in position, ready for Operation Overlord. Now, I reckon I'm gonna make an anti-aircraft gun there and then probably another one round the corner here and then down right at the bottom, I'm probably gonna get an anti-tank gun down here. So the first thing that we're gonna be doing today is going to be getting down some grass on top of the cliff. Now, even with the 500 pounds of Lego that I bought for this video, we still don't really have enough grass green bricks. So we're gonna have to be smart with how we actually apply our green to this base so that we don't actually run out. So because we've not got many green bricks, I'm gonna start off with these gray bricks and then I can just put green tiles over them. Okay, there we go. We've got the green on. Now what I'm gonna do, and this might be a mistake, is I'm gonna put brown to lay the inside of the trench. I don't know how it'll look, and also maybe the top up here. I don't know, but we will see. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for us. Okay, there we go. The brown is now also down. And it only took us nine hours to do it. Now, I'm gonna get your opinion on this, guys. What do you think? Like, do you think I should have just left this as gray? I think I should have left it as gray. You know what? I'm gonna come all the way over here to tell you on this camera that yes, I'm going to remove the browns because oh my god, the wording on that was absolutely awful. I'm going to take the brown. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to put the gray plates on. 
God. Now, I just really do hope that you agree with me that that does look better. I think it does. It makes very clear what's like man-made defenses and what's not. Now, I also have this box of accessory type stuff. We've got barrels, chests, just loads of little detailing features. So I'll just dot some of these around and just kind of help populate the area. It just makes basically makes it look a little bit more like a used base rather than just, you know, a nothing burger. <laughs> Hmm, this is a tasty burger. I suppose we could pretend there's some ammunition up here. It's very possible that might need to go if I'm putting an anti-aircraft gun up there, but for the time being, it'll do. Same thing down along here. Maybe even on like the corners here as well. Now, what about this barbed wire? There's two ways we could do this. We could either try and make our own barbed wire or we could use these things here. Now, I would like to at least try them and see if we can get them looking nice. We used them in the last one, but I, I'll be honest, I wasn't totally happy with them. Like they just don't particularly look like Lego. Also, this is an illegal building technique. So what do you think? It's that's not even legit Lego. Okay, we can't use them. We can't use them. Barbed wire's gone. What we can do probably later on is try and make some of our own. So I think it's time to start trying to do some detailing here, particularly on the beach. I'd like to give this the effect of having had like, you know, there's a wee stone here and then like the sand is piled up against the stone. I think that would look quite cool. So this might give you a little bit more of a clear indication of kind of how that breaks up the studs on the approach to the actual trench network over here. Okay, so you join me as we've passed the 10 hour and 30 minute mark. And so your question might be, what have I been busy with in that time? Well, we've got all of the bunker studs on, and uh, not studs, I mean tiles rather. I've also just done a little bit of detailing around here. You'll see the beach, even though it's only one tile depth, it, we managed to make it look a little bit more interesting down there. So this is the part where the build starts to transform radically. We're gonna start placing down our vegetation and hopefully at this point, I don't ruin the build. What I'll do is I'll start with the smaller pieces. They really are small, this is almost pointless. There's like literally five of them. <laughs> Wow! You know what? Those aren't the those aren't the first ones we're gonna place. So that's starting to come to life a little bit there, which looks good. I can also get a little splash of color every now and again. And after all that building, we can finally now put the minifigures on the board. They're all lined up and they've all already got their weapons, so this should be pretty easy. And so as the boys line up for battle, we finish the build at 11 hours and 40 minutes. So let me give you an update of what we have been doing. What I've done is I've finished off all of the detailing on the vegetation, again, leaving the actual trench network pretty open. I've got a couple of like dead shrubbery I thought was a nice touch down there, whereas as you get up up to the actual proper grass area, you'll see it goes green. On the beach, I've also got some dead shrubbery. We've got some hedgehogs. I've also made some little barbed wire traps and I've just generally tried to make what otherwise would be just a flat beach look a little bit more interesting. So I think we should start with the defenders. So let's get the Germans up there. Obviously, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the MG42 and I'm gonna try and get him into the bunker. Now, I believe this piece should actually come off. There we go. So that will allow me to actually set him up. Out front, we've got three German infantry trying to hold the front line. Of course, they are protected by a little bit of a bunker and also some barbed wire. In the bunker, I did finally manage to get the MG42 set up there. And then we've also got the SS officer and a rifleman up top. Throughout the actual German bunker itself, we've got a couple of guys just repositioning. And then we've got some reinforcements running down the hill. We've got an MP40, two MP28s and an FG44. Unfortunately, I don't have enough Lego minifigures to actually fill that bunker yet. I would love to have a whole bunch more and properly fill out this map. And now what we need to do is we need to now place the allied invasion. Honestly, they've got a pretty big fight ahead of them. Okay, let's get these guys running onto the beach then, shall we? Okay, so there we go. We've got the Americans down. And of course, we've got our British paratrooper, which actually, you know what could be an interesting idea? Seeing as he is a para, let's just pretend that he's been dropped in behind enemy lines and he's gonna jump scare the enemy. And there we go. We've got the Americans on the right-hand side of the flank and we've got the Brits on the left-hand side about to hit the German assault squad. And it only took us 12 hours and 10 minutes. But the results honestly do speak for themselves. I've got to say I'm actually incredibly proud of this build. I really did not expect it to take this long nor put this much effort and energy into it. But I really wanted to use this as a benchmark. Like, this is a new LEGO channel and so I kind of wanted to see, like, if I look back on this in a couple of years' time, will I look back on this and think, 
This is absolutely awful. Now, do remember, there are a couple of important missing features. Remember the anti-tank gun that I was going to make? And also the anti-aircraft gun here, another anti-aircraft gun here. We could also get some actual landing craft here. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that in a separate video in a couple of days' time. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. And let me know what you think of this in the comment section. I genuinely think this is not too shabby. But also, before we do anything else, let's do the final test of the day. Of course, that test is the pickup test. I might, hmm, this might actually be not very smart. I'm gonna give it a, mm, I don't know what I'm doing. This is stupid. This is actually so stupid. But if this stays together, I swear. Oh my god. Genuinely, if you were to see that, you might be tricked into thinking that that's actually a decent build. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video where I'm gonna show you how to populate your World War II Lego builds with custom Lego World War II vehicles. Don't show them back. <laughs> You didn't see anything. Don't forget to use my Raid Shadow Legends link in the description or scan my QR code on screen to get insane bonuses for new players with an epic champion.